Do you blank out or feel numb? Do you have almost no childhood memories? Or do you have people share memories that they've had with you and you're completely confused? Dissociation is incredibly common. I work with so many people who experience this and they don't really understand what's happening. So today, I'm gonna to talk about the five signs of dissociation. About six years ago, I was really struggling with the fact that I didn't have any memories. I don't remember much at all about my childhood. And I had these experiences where people would be like, do you remember when you did this? Or remember when we were here? And I'd be totally confused. A part of me would have this feeling of the memory, but I couldn't recall the memory or the experience itself. My partner would even say to me, are you there? Are you listening to me right now? Because I had this checked out look on my face. I actually got to a point in my life where I thought maybe I experienced some kind of abuse when I was young or that something really traumatic must have happened that blocked me from creating memories. I didn't grow up with what people would think of as extreme traumatic abuse, but I did grow up in a ton of stress and chaos. My parents were too stressed and distracted to meet my emotional needs. And for a child, there needs to be a safe and secure connection and environment. An unsafe or unpredictable environment is a traumatic experience. So it would make sense that I would start dissociating or disconnecting. We dissociate as children when we don't feel safe in our environment, but we know we can't escape that environment. So what do we do? We find a way to adapt or survive in the situation the best way we know how. We have four ways our nervous system copes with danger. Fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. A lot of people talk about fight or flight, but freeze is a really common state that people go into where they just shut down and become numb. When we dissociate, we're physically present, but in this freeze state. If you've ever seen an animal that's really scared and that just completely frees up, not moving at all, this is an example of dorsal vagal shutdown. Instead of running or trying to fight, they're freezing or playing dead in order to avoid an attack. Human beings do this too. Dissociation becomes our coping mechanism and often a pattern in our lives where anytime there's an intense trigger or extreme stress or overwhelm, we go into that state. So let's now talk about the five signs of dissociation. One, memory loss. As I talked about earlier, when we have patterns of dissociation, we struggle with memory loss. We're not forming memories because our body is concentrated only on survival. We might lose chunks of time or be confused if something happened or didn't happen. This makes a lot of sense because if you're completely overwhelmed or in danger, your mind is going to protect you. If you're not fully present in your body and in a disconnected state, your brain is going to struggle to make memories. So you might find yourself forgetting things, misplacing things, or just really struggling to keep up with your tasks because you're so zoned out. Two, depersonalization. This is when you feel like you've completely left your body. It's like you're watching yourself from overhead or outside of yourself. You might be confused or feel foggy about anything that's going on around you. A lot of people describe it like they're living in a dream. You might feel really apathetic or like there's no point to anything, that nothing you do matters. You might be able to get things done, like chores or work, but it's almost like someone else is doing it. You feel like you're carrying out actions, but you're not really in control of those actions. When you're dissociated, you can be doing so many things day to day, but you're not connected or present in any of those things. You might come home at night and not know what you did or be confused about if you did something because almost all of your day you were dissociated. Three, numbness. You feel really nothing. So when something upsetting happens or something good happens, you're just flatlined. A lot of people talk about being unable to cry even when they want to when they're dissociated. It's almost like a flip has switched and you don't feel much of anything, good or bad. Four, sore, tight muscles. When your body dissociates for a long period of time, you're in an immobilized state. In that state, all of your muscles are going to get really tense from being frozen. You might have an overall feeling of exhaustion in your body. Some of that can be from being in an immobilized state for long periods of time. Five, chronic procrastination. When you're dissociated, your body is in the free state. A lot of people describe this as feeling stuck inside their body. Maybe you're thinking in your mind that you need to take a shower, you keep thinking and thinking about it, 
but it's almost like you're locked to your bed or the couch, or you're just scrolling and scrolling on social media. You know you have to do these things, but your body can't seem to move and get up and do them. A lot of people don't understand that when our body is in a shutdown state, we're procrastinating because our body is trying to conserve energy. We might feel unmotivated or even worry that we're lazy. If you have these signs and you're realizing that you too dissociate, there is no need to be concerned. Dissociation is incredibly common and it actually means that your body is working to protect you. On my next episode, I'm gonna teach you my method to stop dissociating and to be more in your body. This is something I created and by practicing it, I really did change my life. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications to get an alert when that video comes out. Leave a comment below and let me know if you relate to these signs and find yourself dissociating.